Ideas Productions presents the Fun Ideas Podcast. Hi, this is Mark Arnold, and welcome to Fun Ideas Podcast number 35. If you would like to comment and or be a guest on this podcast, please drop me a line at funideas.mark at gmail.com. Become a Patreon of Fun Ideas Productions, and if everyone listening just contributed a dollar a month, that would be a tremendous help. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Alvin, the story of Ross Bagdasarian Sr., Liberty Records Format Films, and The Alvin Show is out. Order your hardback, paperback, and ebook copies today on Amazon and at BearManorMedia.com. I am currently still working on Friendly Ghosts, Little Devils, Giants, and Rich Kids, the art and creations of Warren Kremer, and the Total Television Scrapbook, and a Monkey Solo book with my friend Michael A. Ventrella. Our guest today is a fan and collector of Harvey Comics merchandise. You know, Casper, Richie Rich, and the rest. He likes Harvey Comics so much, he built his own online museum. Here he is, the curator of the Harvey Merchium, Jonathan Sternfeld. On the phone today, I have Jonathan Sternfeld, and he is the founder and curator of the Harvey Merchium. Yay! <laughs> so... How or why in the world did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> I ask myself that every day, Mark. Uh, it's, it's, it's a question of, of, of I, I saw a need, and I knew that no one else was going to, to fill the need, and I felt like I had some of the necessary skills required to do what needed to be done, and so decided to take a swing at it. Um, I came into the hobby website thing a little bit late in the game, honestly. There's been people doing what I'm doing for, for quite a bit longer, and um, I, I think currently there's more of a move towards other social media platforms like uh, Facebook and whatnot, so actual traffic to hobby websites is somewhat on the decline and certainly participation in uh, comments and whatnot on the websites is, is on the decline but uh, regardless uh, I saw it as a chance to broaden my skill base I was able to learn stuff about putting up a website and how to run it and whatnot uh, expand my photography skills and whatnot uh, one of the things I really enjoy is taking pictures of the toys to post and whatnot. Um, I had a, a decent collection to start. I was hoping, you know, that other people would contribute photos and, and uh, what they had to to the exhibits. But I figured if I, if I started and, and, and led the way and, and made the framework mm -hmm. that then others could, could fill in. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I, I felt like it, at least I could get a start on it, and that's yeah. what I did. Yeah, I sent you a few things, but I'm, I am freely admit I'm kind of lackadaisical about it. It's like, uh, you want to fly out here 3,000 miles and take photos of all my stuff? Sure. Um, but uh, you said you had a few items to begin with. Uh, what type of things did you start out with? Uh, was it just general stuff you collected over the years or in recent times, or were you always a Harvey collector? Uh, Harvey, okay, let's see. I started collecting the comic books when I was a little kid, uh, specifically 1978, the summer of 78, I think, was uh, when I started. I uh, was at summer camp, day camp, and I found a beat-up copy of Inventions Number 1, Richie Rich Inventions Number 1. Uh -huh. And I had seen comic books before that, obviously, but something with that, that comic clicked with me. I really... Uh, really enjoyed it and kept the copy, brought it home, you know, typical wadded up stuff in my back pocket kind of deal, <laughs> uh, showed it to my folks, <laughs> and they were like, oh, cool, okay, whatever, and this was at the time that uh, uh, Richie was uh, expanding a number of titles, you know, to the 30-odd a month or whatever that were coming out, and so uh, it was easy for us to go to the corner 7-Eleven store and buy current issues off the spinner rack. And so we started collecting the current issues that way, and then I started looking into, oh, comic book stores and back issues, and that's like, well, what's out there? And then I picked up a copy of Overstreet and started looking through the titles and said, oh, look, there's this title. I don't have any of this and whatnot. And so I <laughs> uh, put together a little uh, little checklist. 
just kind of thingy, this, this is what I have, this is what I need, and started hitting comic stores a little more vigorously uh, until the local stores are pretty much exhausted. And then by that time, I had moved on to other interests and whatnot anyway and kind of put the whole collection on hold. And it was basically after college and with the rise of the Internet that uh, the interest was rekindled uh, with eBay. Uh, I mean, eBay started back in, I think it was 95, but I didn't join until 2001. Uh, once I joined, you know, then I started finding some of the books that I hadn't been able to find locally. And, uh, looking for books, I ended up finding, uh, it was one of the Laramie old-timer cars, a rack toy that they had made. Hmm. And I said, well, that's kind of cool. It's interesting. Let me get that. And then I'm like, well, what other toys were made and what other what else is out there? And uh, at the time, you, know, you, know, you uh, started the um, Yahoo group, the Richie Rich Yahoo group. Oh, yeah, group. yeah. That's right. Remember that? I don't know if it even still exists at this point. It but, still uh, exists. I actually didn't start it. I forgot the guy who did. But I, I assumed were, yeah, it because... At the time I joined, I think you were a moderator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was an original moderator, and he just got tired of it at one point, and so I assumed responsibility for it because it would have just gotcha. died. Of course, now, it's yep. years later, it's basically dead now. But all the right, old but stuff... The, the, the Facebook group that kind of filled in for it. Again, yeah. like I said, shifting paradigms in social media, but... Um, so I said, okay, well, you know, let me make a little list of what I've got and put it up there and see, you know, what else people say. And I got one response. Dave Holt came in with a list of items, much, much bigger list than mine. Yeah. <laughs> one of the things that he mentioned was three variants of this, this car. And I'm like, ooh, okay, well, that's interesting. It got me looking. And mm -hmm. sure enough, I did find two other cars. And then I found one that looked different. I said, wait a second, that's kind of weird. Let me buy that. found something that he didn't know of at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really what started the whole thing. They, all the all four variants, they, they used the same backer card and the same blister. So looking mm. at the thing real quick, you can't tell what it is. Wow. <laughs> uh, they all, they're the same part number, same UPC. So, you know, it's like, oh, okay, it's, it's, it's an all-timer car, fine. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the bottom of the car, they actually mold it in, into the, the little uh, base of it, what car it's supposed to be, and at what scale and whatnot, so you can tell that way if you can see the bottom. Right. Um, I found that very interesting. It's like, wow, you know, you didn't even realize that all these different things existed. So um, then I was thinking, okay, well, you need more than just a list. You need more than just text that says, hey, old time a car. You really need pictures. Mm hmm. You know, you, you really need as much data as possible. And that's when I started envisioning. Actually, my, my original vision was a coffee table book, if you can believe such a yeah. thing. I was thinking, oh, I'll take a bunch of pictures, assemble them into a little price guide kind of thing, and get it published. Yeah. And I was thinking, A, nobody would find out about the book and nobody would buy it. And B, as soon as the thing was even at the printer, it would be out of date. Right. I was finding stuff regularly, and it's like, you know, by the time I put together a script and had it uh, proofed and whatnot and sent off to the printer, by the time it came off the printing press, it would be completely, totally useless, because I would have found twice as much stuff. Right. The yeah. Internet allows for instantaneous updates. Yes. So it's like, okay, this is a dynamic format, and it's... You know, I, I run the site for free. I don't run any advertising. I don't pay for, you know, make people pay for membership to the information. I run it like a museum. Uh, you know, it just come, browse, look, respect the information, you know, respect the site, but, you know, I'm not going to charge it to look. And um, I think that, that format has actually worked pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, now, have you gotten some con contributors uh, from it besides myself? I know I have contributed a few things, but... There, there, yeah, no, there are several people have contributed. In fact, this, this past year, I just finished up the, the fifth year of, of running the website. It's hard to believe uh, time has gone so quickly. <laughs> but um, this past year, I only put up 19 exhibits, which was a little on the low side, but eight of those exhibits were guest exhibits. Oh, wow, cool. But they were, but yeah, so actually, uh, it, 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 it comes and goes. It's very... I can't rely on it, unfortunately. But you know, that this is this 
this was one of the very hard things that I had to deal with when I first started the site five years ago. I knew I did not personally have very much. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, if I posted stuff quickly, that I would quickly run out of things to post, and then the site would just sit there stagnant and dead until I got something else or somebody guest posted. Yeah. And then I was worried on the other side that, like, I would announce it and suddenly be inundated with thousands of guest contributions. <laughs> oh, here, here's this stuff, you know, lots mm -hmm. and lots of photos. And I'm like, wait a second, you know, I was afraid that I was going to be overwhelmed and unable to keep up with the the flow. It, it's As it turns out, it's been more uh, to the quiet side than the busy. But... Um, it, it has been going along well, and I do have uh, some possibilities lined up for, for contributions in the future, but it's going to take a little bit of work. Okay. Is there... i got so many questions here. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it, there, it, I, I'll ask this, but I, I even know the answer myself, because uh, as soon as you find something, there's something else. Is there like a holy yeah. grail item that you're looking for? Right can't. now, my holy grail is uh, Bally made a slot machine, a Richie Rich slot machine back in the 80s, and I would really kind of like to have one. In, in New York State, they have to be set up to not take currency. They can only run on tokens or some crazy thing like that, but assuming you could do that, you can actually have a, a slot machine in your home. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is that the ones that have come up for sale have been like in Florida, and I'm up in New York, so it'd be a bit of a drive to go get it, or <laughs> very expensive trucking. They, they weigh about 300 pounds, yeah. so it's not something I'm just going to pick up and throw in my car like I did with my comic book spinner rack. That actually was uh, my original holy grail, was I really, really wanted a spinner rack like the ones that I used to buy the comics off of at the well, Cornell 7-Eleven, and I did finally manage to get one. I had to drive pretty much to Pennsylvania to get it, but uh, it was well, well, well worth the trip, and it did fit in the car, fortunately. I wasn't <laughs> even sure I was going to be able to get it home. I was thinking it was going to be strapped to the roof or sitting in my lap or some crazy thing like that, right. but uh, it, it worked out okay. I did get the spinner rack and got it home. Uh, the uh, slot machine is not going to be so easy. <laughs> and then uh, one thing about me is I'm, I'm very much a completionist. If I know that there's something out there I want it. There's actually two variants of the slot machine. Mm. There's a round top and a round top and a flat top. <laughs> that I didn't know that. Just this weekend I found that the, the casino closest to me uh, just put in a hot stuff slot machine. Yeah, I, I saw that post. Uh, so you, you did see yeah, it, yeah. yeah. I saw it, did, and, and so now there's a hot stuff slot machine, so in a number of years, those will probably be phased out and, and start showing up in the aftermarket gaming uh, sites and whatnot. So eventually, maybe I'll want one of those as well. But the uh, the Richie slot would be very, very fun. I actually own pieces of it. I own one of the wow. glasses, and I own uh, the reels. Mm -hmm. The reels are just pieces of, of cardboard that are, like fit around a big drum. Mm -hmm. So I've got the the reels, and I've got a, I've got one of the glasses that says uh, it's called Rich, Rich, uh, Richie Rich Richie Rich Jackpots. And um, was... one of these days, maybe I'll build a little display case or something <laughs> that's got little lights or something that I light it up from behind. I think that would show very nicely, actually. Now, do you typically get things still from eBay, or do you get it other places like shows or both or what? Right now, it, it's primarily eBay, yeah. Um, I have attended a number of different shows, and I've gotten positive feedback on what I'm doing, but if they have anything, generally it's stuff that I have already. Uh, I've, I've picked up a couple of items here or there, but I keep saying to myself I need to, to go to more shows and, shows and get out there a little bit more, but... Uh, <laughs> So far, it hasn't happened. Yeah. I mean, it, it's hard. It's hard to just. It, it, let me put it to you this way: <laughs> If you've only got so much money, yeah, you can get on eBay. You can buy something, pay the shipping, or not even sometimes, you know, free shipping, whatever, and get the item in a couple of days. Boom, done. Mm -hmm. Go to a show, especially if it's different state, you know, across the country. You're talking travel. You're talking hotel. Mm -hmm. You're talking admission. Talking food while you're there, and then you go around the show, and you may find nothing. Yeah. Even if you find something, you're adding all the costs of the travel and the hotel and the food to the cost of the items. Right, so, right. you know, it, it, it's, it's if you can make the trip into a vacation and make it worthwhile and make it vacation expense, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's it's just, 
it's really much more effective to try to buy online, I think. Right. And uh, you, pro- you probably have had this happen, which I think every Harvey fan it has had this happen. I'm sure you have some sort of list, even if you don't have photos of something. Uh, of, and this must be every Harvey item ever produced. And as soon as you say that, you'll somebody will say, oh, I have this. You know, it's <laughs> just something you've never heard of at all. I get that all the time. Do, do you? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, I try not to say, "Oh, I had this is the list of every item ever," because I know that if I if I say that, I'm just going to be proven wrong. Yeah. Well, it kind of ties into what you're saying about the book. I mean, you mentioned Dave Holt, and we had considered doing that same exact idea at some point. And uh, the thing is, we started, uh, you know, just grabbing photos off the internet and stuff like that. And yep. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, and I will say this in the show, we had a falling out at one point, so you know we don't really talk much anymore. But at the time, it's like every time we thought we had, oh, this is enough photos to do this book, <laughs> we find something else. And it's like, how much stuff is there? And so, yeah, you'd have to do, this is volume one <laughs> or something like that, because you knew there would be a volume two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever. And or a sec- second edition. You know. Revised and expanded, you know what I mean? That, that's the other way to go. But yes, I know exactly what you're saying. Right. Then you start getting into hard questions like, you know, at one point, I, I just recently uh, did an interview where I was talking about how, what a, what a, a depth and breadth of, of characters Harvey published over the years. A lot of people don't realize that Harvey, when they think Harvey, they think Harvey World, they think the 80s, they think Richie, they think Casper, they think Little Dot, Little Lotta, et cetera. They don't know about going back to the Paramount properties and whatnot, Joe Palooka. Mm-hmm. And at one point, you know, they even par- uh, published Blondie and Dagwood. Right. Uh, you know, things like that. So it hasn't happened yet, but one thing that I've always wondered in the back of my head is it's like, gee, should I fe- feature Blondie and Dagwood merchandise if it came up? Because, well, technically it was Harvey, you know, yeah. or uh, Dick Tracy. You know, there was all these these properties that at one point were in Harvey hands, and it's kind of funny if you yeah. think about it. But, you know, I mean, it hasn't been an issue so far. Yeah. And my general feeling is, well, you know, it depends on the item. If it says Harvey or it's the right time period, then maybe yes. Right. I don't know. But, again, you know, if you're putting it into a book, yeah. how well, do you deal well, with that? So. Well, that was my question. I was going to say, do you just stick with, uh, you know, the Harvey World characters, as it were, you know, the – you know, Casper, Richie, I, Rich, or have you ventured have out into the other ones at all? Yeah, most most of what I've put up has been Harvey World simply because that's the easiest stuff to find. Yeah, It's the newest, it's the most recent, it's the most plentiful. And, you know, one of the things I really like about this hobby and, and enjoy about this is that it's not terribly expensive. I mm-hmm. mean, going back to limited funds, you know, anybody could hop in and get a reasonable size collection of Harvey merchandise for a very, very reasonable amount of money. Um, you start getting into some of the the rarer items, like the slot machines, obviously you're going to pay a bit Well, more, yeah, but, but that, know, for, even for a, a slot machine that was... Laramie Rack Toy, you know, Laramie Rack Toy you could probably pick up for 10 or 20 bucks. Yeah. And, you know, that's really not bad. You look at some of the other merchandise that's out there, some of the other comic lines, their characters, their merchandise, some items run into the twenty, thirty thousand dollar $30,000 range for one item. Right, well... You know what I mean? And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, that's nice, but... I don't have those funds, you know, so that yeah. I, think well, I, I think I diverted from the topic here a little bit. Well, no, I was, <laughs> I was just asking about, you know, you mentioned Blondie. It's like when I did my Harvey Comics Companion, I did yes. a lot of uh, uh, information about advertising in the books. And yes. um, things like this would be, like if I was doing the Merchium myself, you know, and I, you know, this would be like a fine line item. Uh they got access to the Blondie cookbook, and it was an overrun, and Harvey had access to it, so they started advertising that you could buy them in the comic books. But it wasn't, produ- uh, it wasn't produced by Harvey. It wasn't produced right. for Harvey. Because but it's advertised in the book, is it, is it Harvey? Yeah, I mean, they, yeah. There's, there's a weird judgment call, because, you know, they, they bought this overstock of this book that stopped selling, and so the infamous Harvey... Uh, warehouse had stacks and stacks of this book 
you know, and they would just sell them. Now, I've seen the book for sale in regular bookstores, and I don't own it because I'm like, eh, you know, I don't know. It's like, you know, I like Blondie. I don't love, love, love Blondie. And, it, yeah, it doesn't make any reference to Harvey at all in the book. And But it's a Blondie cookbook yeah, that they used to advertise. Another one I, I can remember is a book called How to Dance, and that was just another overrun. It was just a general book on how to dance, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, sure. There was an ad. I remember the the ads for that to sell yeah. that. Yeah. And then yeah, the, the other one, and people yeah, do. That was, that, was, that, that was the same deal. They picked up overstock. Yeah, yeah. And then there's uh, another uh, item, and you know, I, I've heard different things on this one. You've probably seen that one is like a drink mixer little. A freebie fly, a flyer or something like that. I don't think it was produced by Harvey, but there were stacks of those in the Harvey warehouse too, so now it's assumed to be a Harvey item. And I go, well, yeah, I guess it is because it was in their warehouse, but they didn't produce it, they didn't write it, they didn't create it, they just had it in there. So, right. you know, it's just kind of... My, my definition, what I've, what I've used as a rule of thumb is if a Harvey character is portrayed on the item somewhere yeah. or the item itself is a Harvey character like a Richie Rich doll you know obviously that's a Harvey item Yeah. if it doesn't have a, a Harvey character so then the question is Blondie and Dagwood are they Harvey characters you can yeah. really argue it either way I have not had to make that judgment call yet the only call that I've had to make is what I'll call ephemera mm-hmm you know, it's like originally, did I just want to do merchandise? Did I really just want to do stuff that people could readily buy in the stores? Well, even that, then you get into what you were talking about with the comic books and the coupons and cutting out the coupon and mailing away yeah. for, like, the uh, the Pressman Richie Rich game versus the Milton Bradley Richie Rich game. Right. The Milton Bradley game you could buy in the store. The Pressman you had to cut a coupon and mail away for. Right. So you got that distinction, and then you got things like... Something you see all the time on eBay. In fact, I just got one in the mail yesterday. Harvey printed posters. Oh, yeah. Calendar posters. The calendar posters. There's, there's more than 300 of them. Yeah. They're numbered. Yeah. It's very, very easy to tell what you got because they're numbered right on them. Numbered and dated. They did a monthly and they did an annual. Yeah. But they sent them to the to the places that were selling the comics. They sent them to the distributors. They didn't sell them to the public. People didn't get them. Right. So, you know, that kind of stuff where it's like, yes, it's there, yes, it exists, <laughs> but no, it's not really available. And, and, and my ultimate decision on that stuff was, yes, I am going to include it. Yeah. Uh, I have not put much of it up yet. Yeah. The poster specifically, I have not put up because I haven't figured out a good way to photograph them. Yeah. Uh, you know, really what I need is almost like a drum scanner kind of thing that I could take, you know, because these are 18 by 24 full-size sheets, you know. They're, right. they're, I have a couple you of know, them. I yeah. want good quality. F huh? I have a couple of them, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've got like 25 of them now, oh, wow. which, you know, like I said, there's over 300, so right. it, that's spin the ocean, unfortunately. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I, I need to say, I, I like to put up really good quality photos. I want everything to be very readable right. and, and bright and vivid and clear, and I just, I haven't come up with a nice way to do the posters, so I haven't done them yet. What I did do was a couple of the uh, the company Christmas cards that they did. Oh, yeah. I guess every year they printed out a stack of cards that said Happy Holidays from the Harveys, and they gave them out to the staff and whatnot, and uh, I printed, let's say I've got two of those, yeah, two of those on, on the website right now. And that's the kind of thing. Again, it wouldn't be available to the general public, yeah. but it's definitely Harvey-related. Yeah. For me, if I was doing it, you know, and so I'll give you my two cents, uh, yeah, I yeah. would include that's it that. because it's Harvey. You know, even if it's a business card or whatever, you know, and it wasn't designed for public consumption, I mean, it was designed as a Harvey item. You know, that's the best I can say about it, so, you know. <laughs> yep, it's, it's featuring their characters. It's promoting their product. Why not? Yeah. Although, you know, one of the, I'm pretty sure one of the Christmas cards I put on the website has Dick Tracy and Blondie and Dagwood on them. Well, I mean, they do. <laughs> you know, back it, to that fine line yeah, again, I mean, when you, know, you, it's like, if you if you go back far enough, you can't avoid it. I mean, but, you know, then right, you have yeah, to make no, and I, I don't necessarily want to avoid it. I'm just bringing that back up again. That, you know, there are a number of different decisions that need to be made all the time. But, I mean, the other thing, you know, when you're printing a book and you got a number of pages and every page costs money yeah. versus I've got a website and technically unlimited 
storage. One of these days they'll probably yell at me for having too much too much data up there, but <laughs> for the moment I'm okay. Yeah. And so, you know, it's like, hey, why not? Put it up there. If I've got it, go for it. That, right. the, the more the merrier. Yeah. I would say my holy grail, since I was asking you about it, it actually sure. have nothing to do with the Casper and Richie Rich stuff just because they didn't do this then. Of course I like that type of stuff and have lots of it. But yeah. in doing, the, again, the research for the book, is they used to give out these little subscription cards. I've never seen those. So there's one of Palooka, there's one of Humphrey, there's one of uh, S- Steve Canyon, there's one of Dick Tracy, you know, and this is just a little... Subscription card. Yeah, it's like a so card. Like and, you know, that you... Yeah, it, you know, just as a giveaway You're not, you're not talking like the, the bunny membership... Uh, not I'm in with bunny not cards. that, but that's a similar thing. But, you know, th- these cards, I believe, I don't really have one, but I think they're lo- like... Uh, six by nine card, and I I think they're either in color or black and white, depending on what it was. And it okay. would say, "Thanks, your pal Joe Paluca or something." You know, it was like a signed photo, but it was just. Oh yeah, yeah. you mentioned that in the book. Yeah, and it's like yeah, I've, yeah, never yeah, yeah, I've never seen any of those. Uh, you know, no, it's like, no. Yeah, and no. that that's quirky things I look for is I do like to find things that were given away as subscription premiums. It's like, oh, what was this? Yes. Yeah. Like another one you may or may not remember, but uh, they talk about this thing called the High Teen Club, and it was this little club you're supposed to set up mm-hmm. if you're a teenager to do good, Again, good I think moral, you that in your book. morals. Yes, and and there's like a little button, and I love buttons, so it's like to have a little button that yeah. says High Teen. <laughs> Uh, I, and I do say this in the book. Unfortunately, high teen has taken on a different meaning, and so you have to wade through uh, <laughs> porn sites, you know, with that uh, terminology. <clears throat> and so, yeah, you know, I think, I, you know, for something like that, I'd probably just have to luck out just looking through somebody's junk box at an antique show, and I go, oh, there it is, you know. But you always wonder how many of these things were produced, you know, like. You mentioned the bunny. Right, what happened to them when they were done with it? When yeah. They, okay, this promo is over. Did they take the box and throw it in the trash? Yeah. Did it I mean, go, you, did you, it get put on a shelf in, in the infamous warehouse? I mean, right. Uh, the, right. And you mentioned the yeah. bunny fan club. I have the yeah. bunny button. It took forever to yes. find it. I don't have the card. I've never ever seen it, and I don't have the poster, and I've never ever seen that. They've got to exist somewhere. I, of you know, I'm, I'm sure they graced the walls of, of teams in, in at least a few homes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I even, you, you know, I always think that even the Harvey family had some of these things, I guess. But, you know, sometimes they've sold to them. Sometimes they probably just tossed them out. So who knows? But Right. You know. Right. Right. But those are the types of things I look for. It's like, I wonder what happened to that. And I've done that not just with uh, Harvey stuff. I've done it with other things. It's like if I see some obscure button. Well, yes, you've, yeah. you've, you've branched into to many other publishers, I know. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, like I like humor magazines. and But, you know, like yeah, using Mad. Mad, m- Mad yeah. merchandise is pretty easy to find. So I don't tend to collect yes. it much. But Cracked is harder. Sick is even harder. <laughs> and things like that. So it's like, you know, it's yep. just like different degrees. And I think, I don't know if this is a reason for you, but in the case of Harvey stuff, it's like some of it is cheap junk, but it's like I'd rather have that cheap junk than some nice porcelain Mickey Mouse statue because who cares? There's a zillion Mickey Mouse statues out there. Absolutely. I know I agree 100%. But like I said, I think right now the, the thing that brings me the most joy are the rack toys. Mm-hmm. And rack toys are the ultimate definition of... Of, of cheap <laughs> and, and disposable. I mean, I remember as a child playing with rack toys, not the Harvey rack toys specifically, but, you know, little pool sets and what. I mean, basically, by the time you unwrapped the thing from the cardboard and played it once or twice, it broke. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, they, you, you, these things are just... It was unbelievable. They, they, um, um, just you know, they, they cost very little, but you got very little for what you paid. I mean, it's just that's the way they work, and mm-hmm. it, it's interesting that you know Ja Rule is, is still in business in, in in Florida. You know, they they manufacture overseas, but they they're still around, still making the same kind of stuff, mm. and. Uh, you know, I, I just, I, I absolutely love the, the rag toys because yeah. the, the, the backing cards are really bright and colorful. The, the items themselves are fun. Uh, I'm looking right now. I have a, uh, a little cabinet in my living room that I, I fill with stuff periodically. And right now, I actually, I have some of my collection in it. 
And I've got right now, let's see, the Richie Rich Watch and Rings from Laramie. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting set because one thing that the Ragtoy producers do to save money, they use the molds for different sets. Mm -hmm. They'll use, they'll print a different backing card with a different character and say, oh, okay, here's the Richie Rich set, but then they'll make Mighty Mouse or Heckle and Jekyll or just some other property that they have. And, and they'll make the same item and with a different backing card <laughs> and, and get, get some more mileage out of the, the toys. The Richie Rich Watch and Rings, I have not seen anything like that set. Mm. Whereas right next to it, I've got the Laramie sunglasses that say Richie Rich on the bridge of the nose. And sunglasses, they made every single character they could. Why not? <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, well, it's just, it just has a word on it, you know. And then uh, pinball games. That's the other thing. You know, the pinball games. That, talk about the example of breaking as soon as you play with them. Mm -hmm. The little flipper thing there to get the ball to go. It's like you pull that once or twice, and boing, there goes the spring, and the thing is shot. But right. it's fun while it lasted. <laughs> I saw. I, I did look at the website briefly before I called you today, and I. Uh, so you have like a, a what you call a white paper about the Jaru stuff, I and mean, what, what is I didn't download yes. it, so you know talk okay. about it, and then I'll eventually get one. But what what's that entail? What's in that? What I did. Um, it was actually part of, of of an interview that I did recently. Uh, the the interviewer was asking me, okay, well, you're coming up on your fifth anniversary. Are you planning on doing any sort of special content or anything for for the thing? Mm -hmm. And you know, it got me thinking. It, it was actually a really interesting question. And I, I, my answer was that, in my opinion, the content of my website is the exhibits. It's the photos and the table of information that I put with the photos. However, one of the things that I did that I thought was kind of neat was once I finished posting all of the Jaru rack toys that I own, and there was one that was actually a guest exhibit as well, I made a separate table on the Jaru manufacturer page showing all the different product numbers and UPC codes and whatnot and linking to all the different exhibits. And when I put that table up, I was looking at it, and I started seeing patterns in the UPC codes and the product numbers and whatnot. I said, it's kind of interesting. So I took the table and threw it in Excel and played around with it a little bit and ended up finding things like, okay, well, there, I think it was the, the Richie Rich toys were all 2,700 numbers, where there's the Caspers were all 2,900s or whatever. Hmm. <laughs> so I did all this little analysis thing, and I wrote up a, uh, a little blog post about it and put it up there, and I thought that that was kind of interesting. Um, in, in looking at, at different types of content, different types of consumables, I've been looking into infographics. I've been fighting my way through uh, infographics for dummies for a couple of weeks <laughs> now. It's a little dry reading, but I'm trying to get through that. Um, video, podcasts, like what we're doing right now, you know, there's, there's mm. and uh, downloadables, PDFs or any sort of, of takeaway are all considered things that websites can do to add value. And I said, well, hey, I've got content here. Why don't I make a downloadable? And so I turned the content into a PDF and, and posted it up there with the, with the tables. So now that people can uh, view all the, the data and the analysis all at one time, one page. The, the way I did it initially, I said, okay, well, you know, go to this page, sort the, cut the table this way, mm -hmm. and then, you know, look at it. I just printed, you know, multiple copies of the table in the PDF. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that, I'm, I'm working on more things like that. I, I, I like the idea of people being able to download things, uh, print things. Uh -huh. So, so different kind of like. I'm, I'm, go ahead. What's that? So different like I'm, checklists I'm, I'm, or I'm, something, or is that what you mean? Uh, it's not. No, it's not really as a checklist. I mean, it is a checklist that shows what's currently on the site, and I will mm -hmm. update it if anything more mm -hmm. ever comes. But it's just you know showing how they how they group their products and whatnot. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, and uh, I. Uh, what I was starting to say is I'm kind of old school. I really like printed paper, even if I'm looking at a computer screen. If, I, if it's something long, I'd rather read it on paper. I'd rather print it and then take it and, and read it later on paper. So right. uh, one of the things that I did, there's a couple of things I did when I set up the Merchium website, and some of them 
caused me extra work, and so in that sense I regret it, but I still think it was the right decision. Uh, one thing is the duality between the blog posts and the exhibit pages. Mm -hmm. You go to a museum, you go to an exhibit, there's a thing there, you got the thing, you got a little card next to it describing it, the name, the exhibit number, a little bit of data about it, and a neutral color wall, you know, just the, there's, there's very little distraction. You got good lighting, mm -hmm. you got the item, you got your information, that's it. <laughs> I wanted to do something similar. The, the, the way I've set up the website, the exhibit pages, I take away the sidebars. There's no comments. It's just the pictures mm -hmm. and the table. And that's it. Everything else goes on the blog post mm. and the blog post page, you know, so that you know, the comments and everything are there. If you wanted to get interactive and do it that way, you got that side. But if you're looking at the exhibit, it's clean. The other th thing that that allows me to do, <coughs> if you want to print the exhibit, again, you don't have comments and whatnot printing with with the with the pictures and whatnot. You can print a nice clean copy just of the, the pictures and the table and whatnot and get it out that way. What I want to start doing and haven't quite gotten to yet is converting, instead of doing the print button that's there now. Mm -hmm. I want to actually make each exhibit printable as a PDF. Oh. Wow. It's, better, it's better hitting the print button and going to a new page, which is uh, pound print of the, of the same thing, it's doing a, a download of a PDF and printing the PDF that way. Mm -hmm. I'm, still, I'm still working that out, but I think that'll be nice in the long run. I think you said this on the top of the show, but you, you, you have experience as a webmaster and did training, or did you kind of figure this all out yourself. <laughs> I am a computer programmer by trade. Okay. I, I do uh, business software, transactional processing. Okay. So I use the web, but I had never done any webmastering at all. Oh, okay. And so this was all new learning for me. It, it was really, you know, some good experience for me to learn some, some new technologies that I hadn't been exposed to before. Yeah. But I will say this, it is a very nice looking website, so you obviously learn things. So <laughs> I, th I think I need your help to do my, my website. My website, I'm kind of so so with it, and it, it looks dated and clunky. And I just, I haven't updated it because, yeah, I'm more on Facebook and everything else. But I said, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to find the motivation. And honestly, what's kind of funny, you're, you're saying the dated and clunky. There are people who would say that my website looks dated and clunky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, there, there's a number of websites out there that I used to read regularly that I used as inspiration for my site. Uh -huh. And since the time that I put my site up, they've either ceased to exist <laughs> or they've gone through these, like, modernization facelift things that they don't look the way they did anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So now... Um, uh, you know, my site's starting to look a little dated, but there's a reason I set my site up the way I did. Hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I still think it works in that sense, and so I don't really want to change it. I may have to at some point, but for now, I'm, I'm pleased with the way it is. Well, I do appreciate And certainly, if, 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 if you want any help, I'd be more than happy to help you. <laughs> uh, one, one of the rules of thumb that I've been doing, I, I, I really must sound like a, a cheap skin flint. I was talking about, you know, <laughs> enjoy the hobby because it's inexpensive earlier and yeah, saving yeah. money on travel and all this other thing. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue that theme here, for better or worse. Okay. Um, I've tried to do the website as inexpensively as possible. Right. It's not completely free. I do pay for hosting. I do pay for domain name registration. But I'm using a free theme. I'm using free plugins. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't cost as much per month as it could. Yeah. Um, you know, that, and, and that's simply because I would rather put the money into buying another rack toy or something. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, I appreciate, you know I, mean? you, <laughs> I appreciate you don't have a lot of uh, flash animation and stuff like that. Sometimes it can get distracting or annoying or, you know, yes. lots of pop-ups or something, things like that. Yeah, you can know? you imagine uh, Sid Jacobson's uh, Richie Rich little Richie Rich has a hard to go to the little <laughs> You know, you go to the website, that starts blaring over your speakers. I yeah, mean, that, yeah. would, that would really drive people crazy. No, <laughs> I, I, and again, like I said, it gets even quieter still when you go from the blog page to an exhibit page. Mm -hmm. Then you're really just looking at the, you know, then it's, it's, it's very, 
distraction free, and that is what I was aiming for. Right. Thank you. I, d I do have a question. I do have a question here, though. Is it's, you know, this will get you out of the cheap thing. Um, <laughs> has there been? Well, I'm totally cheap, so I understand. You know, I would love. I love to find. Actually, here's what I like to do. I like to find something that's worth a lot of money, and I spend nothing on it. For example, recently I was at an antique show, or it was actually a garage sale, same type of thing, and I yep. saw a little Davy Jones doll, and I said, those are worth some money, and I asked, like, how much is this? And she goes, a dollar, and I said, okay. And then I look okay, it up, yeah. and they're worth, like, 85 bucks, you know, 100 bucks, uh, depending, <laughs> so it's like, yeah, that's what I like, so yes, I'm cheap. But is there something in all your years of collecting or whatever that... Uh, this is expensive, but I'm plopping down the money for it, and I bought it. So w what's the most valuable thing, you know, either that you did pay a high price, or maybe you didn't pay a high price, but it's the most valuable thing in your collection? Oh, definitely the spinner rack. Uh, oh, okay. I got a very good deal on it, but it was still up in the way by far the most expensive item in the collection. Now, is that the spinner rack that has Richie on it? Is that what the one it is? Or is yeah, it? Okay. This, is, this is the... the, the this particular item, uh, to my knowledge, it came in a four-sided, a five-sided, oh, and a flat. <laughs> my, my local comic book store has three of them flat, and I'm like, ah, oh, please sell me them, and they won't. Uh. So, but anyhow, I've got the four-sided, and it's got um, Archie, Superman, Spider-Man, and Richie Rich. Okay, got it. The four, the four of them, their heads, and the Comic Code Authority logo. And so there's, there's uh, that pattern is repeated, um, in my case, four times, one on each side. The five-sider has it five times. The flat one has it once. Okay. And, um, you know, that, that just goes to show the power that Harvey had at the time. Right. And, you know, Richie is up there with Superman. Right. <laughs> you know, people don't think about and that. Spider -Man. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Richie's there with Spider-Man. Yeah. Richie's there with Archie. It's like... Yeah. Yeah. Archie people can believe the other two. It's like no, he he was a marketing powerhouse for years, and that yeah. was the time that I started collecting. That yeah. was when I was into it, so it was a very significant part of my life. I figured it was that one, uh, but I wanted to ask because you know the spinner rack that's like for non-Harvey collectors is always the uh, Hey Kids comics. Yeah, the Hey Kids comics one, which is a cool one, yep. and I really like that one. Oh, I don't, very cool. yes. I, I don't have any spinner rack, but you know it'd be nice to have. You know, my my choices are both of those, the Hey Kids comics or the one with Richie on it. But you know, <laughs> again, don't have either of them. So, um, yeah, and that that exceeds even the you know in in the comic books, the the most expensive comic book I own or was actually from my childhood. Um, Poor Little Rich Boy number one. Mm -hmm. My local comic book store at the time was able to get a copy of it, and sold it to us at what was then a reasonable price, but the reasonable price was still such that my parents were like, this is what you're getting for Christmas, that is it. Period, end of discussion, don't ask for anything else, <laughs> shut up, get in the book, that was it. <laughs> so that was, I've had that my whole life and I still have it, mm -hmm. uh, but the, the spinner rack was three times the price of that. Oh wow. <laughs> you know, the, in, in terms of outlay, right. in terms of value, you, you know you know what uh, Poor Little Rich Boy number one goes Oh yeah, now. oh yeah. I mean, it's insane. Uh, my, copy is, I, my copy is really hard to grade because it's really, really clean, yeah. but the staples are popped on the cover. Oh, So wow. that detracts from the grade. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. So it's like, well, it's kind of this, but it's kind of that. You know, I mean, it depends on who's grading it, I suppose. Yeah. I, I got in on it. You know, when I started Harveyville Fun Times, it was 1990, and I yep. just knew at that point, I better get all the number one issues. And But they were already going up in price at that point. Yes. I think they definitely were, And yeah. so, I mean, these sound like nothing now. So I got my Richie number one, my little dot number one, everything yeah. number one, uh, for like $50 one. or less, you know, which uh, was insane then, I thought, for myself, because I'm so cheap, you know. Because <laughs> <laughs> I hate p paying more than maybe 10 bucks for a comic book ever, you know, even now. Yeah. You know, So it's yeah. like for me to plop down $50 here, $50 there, and everything, and now, you know, people look at them and, you know, like, uh, you know, 
and we'll talk about this in a minute. You know, when I went down to L.A. with my collection, and uh, they had little dot number one there and everything like that, it's like, ooh, I'll take these. You know, it's like, and I mentioned that I paid fifty dollars for my little dot number one. They're like, gulp, really? You know, and it's like, yeah, it was thirty <laughs> years ago. You know. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> But uh, that's the way you know. That's the way collectibles go. I mean, they, they either go up in value or they don't. I mean, they yeah. definitely with the, the comic books, they've gone up a bit. No. Um, the, the the thing that discouraged me from from really actively pursuing more of the comic books yeah. was the, the 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 warehouse, mm-hmm. the file copies. I mean, at this point in time, you can get on eBay and buy complete runs of titles in like near mint file copy condition. Yeah. If you have enough money. And, and so it's like, okay, where is the thrill in that? So my copies, a lot of them are good. Yeah. You know, they've got writing on them. They've been read. Yeah. I mean, some of them are missing the centerfolds because uh, Harvey was very fond of doing <laughs> four pages bad yeah. in the middle. Yeah. You know what I mean? The kids, would, the first thing they would do is rip out those four pages and goodbye there. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You know, see, I'm, I, I actually sat there one time and page counted every single one of my 2,000 books yeah. and made sure, you know, okay, yep, this one's missing its centerfold. Damn. Yeah. So, you know, my, my collection, yeah, it's complete, but it's not. Yeah. worth anything and to make it worth something yeah. just to me again it's not worth it yeah it's, it's it's not worth the money to me yeah so i'm kind of in the same boat really shifted to the merchandise I, i'm kind of in the same boat it was like when i started collecting them you know for for reals i, I told people vg or better uh, must be complete, and that was my only rule. So you know, I have quite right. a few that are in okay shape, but you know, it's like. <laughs> yeah, but they're, read- they're, they're readable. That's good. The story is all there. Yeah. Great, you know, because one of the things that I, I still hope to live long enough to retire and do <laughs> is index all the stories. Well, and I want to do. That. I want to do that it, too. It, you know, I say. Yeah, it, everybody wants to do that. That's why the Grant Comics database came about. You know, yeah. what, what, that's what I'll probably do is contribute to them instead of doing it myself. I actually set up yeah. a Microsoft Access database and start of doing it myself yeah and when i got to i was going to scan the books as well yeah and then i was like wait a second we got those 68 page giants with the uh the saddle bound stitching yeah how do you put that on a flatbed scanner you can't you, you don't unless you destroy the comic and yeah. i'm like i'm not going to take i'm not going to take my hundred dollar millions number one and then break the spine and flatten it out on my scanner sorry yeah. <laughs> well you just have to get a rotten coverless one or something but then who where do those go right, after you know? sc- right so i mean that again you know I've, I've had a number of really, really great ideas over the years. The only one that stuck is the Merchian. Yeah. Uh, everything else, I've I've talked myself out of for one one reason or yeah. another. Yeah. Well, I've talked myself out of doing the index too. I did start, and then I s- and then Grand Comics Database came along. But we could talk offline on that and see if there's a, fig- a way to figure it out. Because there are problems I have with GCD too, but at least they did it. You know, that's the only thing I could say about it. Um, yep. Let's see. So I, I was going to ask you about, and I just mentioned. So let me give you, a, give everyone out there listening a little bit of background. So Johnny Harvey is Leon Harvey's grandson. Leon Harvey yes. was the brother of Alfred Harvey, who is the founder of Harvey Comics. And right. in recent times, Johnny Harvey uh, realized all this, that his family's legacy and everything. So he is creating a documentary called. Ghost Empire. Ghost Empire. Yeah. Yes. So he's traveled around the country, and so um, I was. Uh, I'm up here in Oregon, so I flew down to LA yes. to be with him. I brought some of my merchandise with, which you'll see in the film, and yep. uh, it was very quick shoot. I came down one night, s- slept, uh, did interviews. They shot all my merchandise, and then that next night, I was back on the plane up here. I was that fast. Um, <laughs> But we got it done. And so I know you were in the film. So what was the New York yes. experience like? And what did they do when they showed up? I, so. I, I took a day off of work, stayed home. They came eh, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning or so. And they were here until about 4 in the afternoon. Mm. And um, most of the merchandise lives in a bedroom upstairs. So they spent a bunch of time in the bedroom upstairs shooting stuff there. And then we brought some of the merchandise downstairs and spread it out on the dining room table. And they uh, set up their film equipment and whatnot. They had all these rigs to to do uh, pans and whatnot smoothly. And um, they were playing with uh, a couple of the board games that I have. (laughs) They had the board 
board games set up on the table and they were moving the board pieces around the board and stuff like that. It was really quite fun. And then while they were doing that, I took all my dolls and I spread them out on my couch and they did this big pan shot where they, 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 they moved the camera across the couch and showed all the dolls and they came out really good. <laughs> I think that's actually in one of the uh, trailers that they put uh, up online. Mm-hmm. You can you can see the dolls. I thought that was kind of interesting. Now, were you interviewing? I don't, I don't, get, a, I don't get a speaking part. They oh, didn't interview okay. me at all. They, <laughs> they just shot the merchandise. Unfortunate. Okay. All right. Um, I told them if they ever want to come back and talk to me or shoot more stuff, they were welcome to. But uh, okay. <laughs> well, at least they got your stuff on there, and it, it, you know I've seen yeah. brief photos of it. Like I saw the group shot of you and all the filmmakers and everything. So I was just kind of curious yes, yes. about you know how long it took and what they did and everything because it seemed like it, it was part. Go ahead. It, 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 it was surprising how long it took them to do each shot. I mean, there was multiple, multiple takes of each shot, especially like the board game and whatnot. They wanted a very specific look and feel to the shot, and so they did it, you know, 30 or 40 times. Oh, wow. they, probably spent, they probably spent like two hours shooting that five seconds of footage of playing the board game. It was <laughs> really, really very interesting, but whatever. If that's that's the way they want to work. Yeah, that's I think they, they got more work. efficient. When they, were done, <laughs> when, when they were done, they were satisfied. So, oh, okay. you know, that's right. what really counts. I think they got more efficient when they got down to L.A., but they also had a very tight uh, schedule. I don't know if they did when they were in New York, but uh, they were shooting... I think they were pretty relaxed, actually. Uh, I, I, they had a little bit of a drive to get back down to the city in that evening, but okay. uh, I, I don't think they were feeling the pressure as much, and so I think they took the time to uh, okay. to really get it the way they wanted it. Okay, because on the L.A. one, it was me one day, and then the next day they found Jeff Montgomery, believe it or not, and so they were interviewing him. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. And then uh, they had a day where they are going to DreamWorks to talk about the newer cartoon shows and everything. Yeah. And uh, it seemed like they had a fourth thing set up, but those are the three I remember. I was really shocked nice. that they found Jeff because I wanted to interview him for my book, but I lost track of where he went. You know, so, <laughs> so I put the photo of him. Obviously, when, they've got connections. That's yeah. good. You know, I mean, it, it's kind of a sad story in a certain way. He makes the company public and, t- you know, does some movies, and then they kick him out, you know. And so it's like I could see where he kind of would want to disassociate himself a little bit from the Harvey story, you know. But, hey. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't blame Jeff too bad. I think Jeff just. It was a question of timing. I think the market was declining for comic books in general at that point of time, and even if the Harvey family had still been running things. I, I think there would have been a decline in, in comic sales during that time period regardless. I, yeah. You know, that was that was the start of video games and whatnot, and, and so kids were spending their time and money differently already. Yeah. Uh, you know, making movies was a really smart move because kids go to movies. Yeah. You know, I mean, and it's, it's so... And I forgot if I... I forgot if I... I, 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 I go ahead. No, I'm done. Go. Oh, um, but I, I I forgot if I mentioned in my book, but you know it's like it was also at the same time when Harvey went under his uh, Charlton went under, although it came back a little bit later on too, and uh, Fawcett threw in the towel. You know they'd come back, you know, with Dennis the Menace and had all those books, and then they 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 went under in the early '80s as well, and so right, yeah, so yeah. it's indicative of the marketplace. I mean, you know, so. Placing the blame on Jeffrey Montgomery's lap is uh, a little extreme, I think. But yeah. Well, that was later on when they got rid of him. That was, you know, not yeah. not early '80s. That was late '90s. But yeah. That was the '90s, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, yeah you're right. <laughs> but uh, you know, Montgomery's thing at the time I thought was a big mistake, but looking back, it probably wasn't. Is he? you know, put out the Richie Rich and Casper films, and then he said, well, this is where it's at. These films, I'm not going to do the comic books anymore. And it's like, well, if anything, he was kind of premature. I mean, look at Marvel and DC. Now the films are where it's at, and forget these comic books, you know? It's like... (laughs) I was going to say, they're they're, they're, they're talking about the same thing. I mean, there's actual talk of of, of stopping printing Marvel comics right Right, now. Right, right. I can't even comprehend it's like that's where this all started but i i don't know that it's it's an interesting time right now that's for sure mm-hmm. now do you, do you you said you had most or all the comic books do you still collect the comic books too or are you uh, just whenever or what what's the deal on that um i've been I, i've got all the mainline richies okay. because richie was the richie was my character richie was uh. was really what i was into i've been filling in 
the little dots and little lotas at my local comic shows and stores uh, because there are a lot of Richie stories in them. Yes. <laughs> and again, not well indexed. You know, sometimes there are stories in, in Dot and Lotta that never appeared in any of the Richie titles. Yep. I'm not sure how that happened because Harvey was famous for reusing the stories that they yeah. had. And yet there are a number that appear only in the backs of Dot and Lotta. Yeah. So I've been picking up more of, of those to. Uh, well, to try to finish out those collections, but no, I, I don't have every single oh, Harvey okay. comic. No. Okay. And then the more the, the more obscure ones, ones are the ones that appeared in the back of Little Max and Mutt and Jeff. Those <laughs> I've got. Oh, oh you do have those. Okay. Ago, be, yeah, and I've got all those because those were in uh, Overstreet. Yeah. Okay, I, that's I true. Really, I, I rely very, very, very heavily, too heavily, on the Overstreet price guide. Yeah. I, I use it. I well, use it as a check loose to figure out, you know, what's there, what's out there, and whatnot. And they at one point did index. Okay, you know, little, little Max one twenty seven or whatever has a Richie story in it. They actually put that right in the book, and I said, okay, and I went out and I bought that copy. So no, those I actually the ones that I'm missing. Uh, you and I are both missing some of the uh, Astro comics. Yeah, yeah. Those are very, very hard to find. Yeah. All of them, and it's 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 not even easy to determine what really was printed. I use uh, again the Grand Comics database. Yeah, Grand Comics database. I believe that's all of them. I think there's 21 or 22 of them. I can't remember the exact number without looking it up. Yeah, I probably got about 13 of them. I'm yeah. probably missing quite a few. Yeah, of them, I, I know I'm missing three. And every time I bid on them on auction sites, they've I've all, I'm always out there at the last minute because I don't only pay so much for them. I say, I'll be crazy if I'm going to pay more for an Astro Comics than I did my little dot number one. Gee. Yeah, really. <laughs> That's how I think about it, I even if it's you. worth no, more I now. Agree. I, I totally agree. I mean, you know, at some point, maybe. But, yeah, no, I, 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 I hear you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then you and I at one point had talked about those, uh, the baseball uh, the Richie Rich Casper and Wendy National Leagues. Oh yeah, yeah. and uh, you know which leagues actually, or not, which teams actually got prints and which ones didn't, because you know they yeah. didn't do the whole league. So you know that one, I'm not positive whether I have every I think team there's or not. Six, six of them now. Six versions. Six of them. Yeah. Okay, so I may, I may have all of them yeah. actually. But yeah. I always keep my eyes open in case something random pops up because that's yeah. what happened with the uh, the old time of car. Yeah. I thought I had them all, and all of a sudden I said that doesn't look right. Yeah. Well, it's just and like you know, the thing. That, and I bought it, and it turned out, yeah, look at that. That's a different <laughs> one. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's good to keep your eyes open even if you think you know everything. Yeah. Well, the one that's coming up now, and you may have seen it on the Harvey page on um, Facebook, uh, I mentioned three of them, and I have to give credit to the late, uh, great Quentin Clem. He was the one who actually put a lot of that information in mm -hmm. Overstreet uh, from yeah. Little Max and stuff like that. And then uh, he was the one who pointed out uh, right before he died that it's like, you know what, I found out that there's some issues uh, that came out in 15 cent regular editions and 25 cent giants, the exact same issue. Oh, yeah. And he yeah. pointed out that there was three of them, and he gave me a photo, and I put it in the book, and I figured those were the three because Quentin knows, he knows everything, but now it's up to like right. seven, you know, and it's like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, wow, you know, how many of these did they do? And I thought I had found them all because I, uh, there's another website uh, called uh, Mike's World of DC Comics or something like that. That's great if you want to look at covers, uh, all the covers that came out in a particular month um, of just Harvey, or you can put every title up if you want to. Okay. I'll recommend that to you to look at sometime. But <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, and I go. I think I have looked at it actually when I was trying to research the. Um the matchbook covers. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you if you remember. There's the uh, back in the forties. Harvey used matchbooks to advertise their comics. Now at the time mm -hmm. they were doing romance comics, true right. true love stories and whatnot. But I picked up a matchbook from a collector of matchbooks. Mm -hmm. That was Harvey. There was like three different covers, and I'm like, okay, well, what covers are these? And I ended up using. Actually, no, I, I did use Grand Comics Database on that one, but I did have to look for a couple of sites to try to figure out, narrow down the year, the month, mm. oh, okay, and then figure out which ones were, were depicted there. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, you, you look in those, and it's like nobody talks about those 15 and 25 cent variants, even Grand Comics yeah. Database. Of course, right. like you, really th of course, like you, they like to have photos of things, and it's like, you know. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't and always have a photo of variants of some of the of some of the covers too, right? There's, there's uh, 
Yeah. Yep, and, the, and Quentin pointed that out to me. It's like the Giants usually is 35 cents, and it's like, oh, those are Canadian printings. It, originally, we thought they were test markets, and then we figured out they were Canadian printings. So that's yep. what that is. So you got to be careful of all that kind of stuff. It's, it's, <laughs> it's very, very tricky. And Harvey wasn't the only one who did that. I mean, it's like we're no, finding that all. out. Uh, not at all. Uh, you know, doing Cracked Magazine, you know, and stuff like that. It's like, you know, oh, yeah, they did that up there. And sometimes they change text. There's one issue of crack. now I'm on the lookout for this because I collect that too, is the standard version says something like, America's Funniest Magazine. Well, it's Canada, so it says Canada's Funniest Magazine or something like that on that oh, version. And it's like, it's the exact same cover, but they changed the text. And it's like, I want that one. Nobody sells right. this on eBay. You know, and nobody has it. And it's like, ah. <laughs> you know, And Harvey did similar things like that. You know, it's like, oh, you know. <laughs> you know, we're, you're talking about those National League comics. Yeah, so it's like, why did they yeah. do that? You know, <laughs> just to annoy us fans. <laughs> Now, do you go into collecting original art as well, or do you try to just stay with the merchandise type stuff? Original art tends to be outside my price range. I'll be I'll be honest with yeah. you. I, I I like the original art, uh -huh. and I would be happy to own original art, but I have not gotten into collecting it just because it, it tends to get pricey, and there are people who specialize in collecting original art. I actually had... Uh, Harvey original art collector contact me and say, hey, I've got some original art. Do you want to fit? Going back to what we were talking about yeah. earlier and the fine lines and the distinctions. Yeah. Guy collect contacted me and said, hey, do you want to put up some original art? And I thought about it and I very politely said, no. Yeah. I'm like, you know, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to show stuff that is not otherwise documented. I'm not putting comics up because yeah. the comics are well documented in the Grand Comic Database. Yeah. I'm not putting original art up because presumably for every book that exists, at some point there was original art for that book. Mm -hmm. So you can make a one-to-one -one list and say, okay, well, there you go. This is it. So it was, it was a tough call for me, but yeah. I, I did have to pass on that because it's like that's just opening up, yeah. you know, a lot of possibilities for, for what I perceived as, as little gain. It would be cool to look at, but yeah. um, I just I just didn't see it as a good fit and, and, and turned it down. Well, I do like and it that you're putting Like I said, I, I, I have very, I have a couple of pieces that but yeah. I certainly don't have a collection of. I, I've been focusing more on the calendar posters because those, yeah. you know, you can sometimes get a deal on them. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was very glad you're uh, putting promotional items because, you know, you know they're they're kind of one of a kind, but not so one of a kind that you know, <laughs> like the original. Well, and art. again, I, I, I can't see a Grand Comics database did finally put the tempo books up. I was very yeah. surprised they did. I didn't think they were going to. I was yeah. actually going to put the tempo books up. Yeah. Um, but I can't see them putting the calendar posters. Yeah. No. Never. No. Ever. It's no. not a fit. It doesn't fit, but it fits with me. Yeah. I'll put them up. You know, as soon yeah. as I can figure out how to, how to get them nice looking, right. I'll put right. them up. <laughs> so I'm trying, to fill, I'm trying really hard to fill a niche that is not being filled otherwise. Yeah. That's 100% my goal. Mm -hmm. You know, why, why, why reinvent the wheel? Right. So I'm, I'm really trying to focus on stuff that other people aren't doing. And, and yeah, the calendar posters, uh, I, I don't see anybody else doing. It's mm -hmm. just not a good fit. Mm-hmm. Now, if somebody wanted to contribute, if he's never seen your yeah. site, I guess you could give the actual website here, and then uh, uh, give like little <laughs> tips on how to uh, contribute if they want to contribute. So, yeah, I'm, in, I'm not looking for money. I'm not looking for people to send me the actual stuff. What I what I want is is photographs, and um, you know the typical side, front, back, any any part of it that actually has printing or, or other information of the on the item uh, you know like the the rack toys I'll go back to again some of the rack toys the barcode is on the back so I'll show the front and the back so that the barcode is visible on the back some of them the back is completely blank to save printing costs mm -hmm. well I don't show the back because there's no information there mm -hmm. so basically all I want is email me the photos and if I can read all the information off of the photo if the photo is clear enough then that's really all I need uh, I just ask people whether they want to be acknowledged by name 
or remain anonymous. Yeah. That was one of the things that when I first was setting up and was talking to different collectors and even in different genres, it surprised me a little bit. And then I said, well, no, that kind of makes sense. Some people have wonderful collections, yeah. massive collections of stuff, and they don't want anyone to know about them. Yeah. They don't want their name out there. They don't want to be acknowledged by name as having this stuff. Right. And I said, well, fine. I'm, I'm the public face. Yeah. I'll be the name. You know, I'll, I'll put the stuff up there, and you, you, you're anonymous. That's fine. Oh, yeah. And, and people have taken advantage of that. I have several yeah. uh, anonymous contributors, and I'm fine with that. Yeah. Well, so, so yeah, they don't want yeah, to yeah, catch yeah, wind that people steal it. Or <laughs> yeah. They don't want to catch wind that, you know, so people steal it or something. And, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, he has so that, that, you know. Oh, look, I've got all this stuff. Okay, yeah. and then people come break in and steal it. Exactly. Right. <laughs> um, so, um, pictures, and then, you know, do you want to be acknowledged or not? And if I can't read all the information off of the pictures, then, you know, sometimes I'll be like, oh, what is the copyright on that? I can't read that copyright. Mm -hmm. You know, there'll be a little bit of follow-up with that, but that's all there is to it. Okay. It's very, very simple. I try to make it painless, and I try to make it, uh, you know, like I said, I, I, I respect people's privacy if they uh, if they want that. Okay. And uh, I guess there's no real resolution, but yeah, you probably wouldn't want something, you know, that's probably not a problem with today's... The, the, the better the picture, the, the, the better, you know. Okay. Send, send me the best you can do, okay. and I can scale it down. I, I edit every photo that goes up. Got it. And, and uh, uh, actually, cool. it, takes, it takes me a lot longer to put up each exhibit than I ever thought it would. I originally <laughs> figured, ah, a couple of pictures, a little table, boom, you know, five minutes, whatever. No, it takes me, it takes me probably two or three hours to do yeah. a typical exhibit in post um, with okay. the photo editing. That's assuming the, the photos are already taken. Right. I usually take batches of photos at a time and, and put them on the computer and just leave them there, and then I'll edit them and post them one at a time. But, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a process. Yeah. And I will say, because you've told me this before, and so this is why it takes me so long to get you anything, is, is you want original photos, not a photo from eBay or something like that. So, yeah. That is a whole intellectual property yes. thing. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> there are a number of things that I would love to post that I have seen on eBay, and it's like, well, yeah, that's nice, but, uh, you know, I, but I've... I, Sellers have not been very receptive to, to using their photos mm. in other ways. They're, they're generally very protective. But they're going, no, 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 I'm using a photo to sell the thing. That's all. They have no interest in the item above and beyond getting rid of it. <laughs> and, and a lot of them, you know, don't even know what they have. That is, they don't, they're not really interested in it the way that a collector would be. It's like, you know, I more need to know who does the item actually get sold to and then contact them and say, hey, by the way, I really like this item. I didn't get it, but, you know, can you send me pictures of it? And that, right. of course, is not going to happen either. Right. Uh, so, yeah, no, uh, I, I, I really want to know that people are taking pictures of things that are in their collection, that's things that they own, and so that they can talk about it intelligently they can read the label if, the, if need be because hey they own it yeah as opposed to these things that are just out there and it's like yeah i don't know what that is really yeah i just want to say that so you don't get inundated with somebody who says well here's 300 photos off of ebay of stuff i saw and it's like i can't use any of it you know <laughs> <laughs> you know i appreciate that thank yeah, you yeah. um and, uh, I, you know, again, the website is just harveymerchiam.com. I forgot off the top of my head. I just have yes, a bookmark. So. www.harveymerchiam.com. Uh, if the easier way to get to it, if you don't want to try to remember how to spell merchiam, is uh, harvey.toys. Oh. I, I bought the dot .toys uh, domain name. So if you do harvey.toys, you will still get to the merchiam website. Okay. And if somebody wants to just get a hold of you, just in general, if they had questions or anything. There's a contact the curator page on the website. They can email me right from there, uh, curator at uh, harveymerchiam.org. And um, that's that's definitely the, the easiest way to get a hold of me. Okay. And I guess I never asked this, but, I mean, do you ever sell any of your items, or do you, is it all one of a kind, so you just kind of keep everything? I have a couple of duplicates. Actually, um as part of a like trying to drive more traffic to the website um, mm -hmm. a number of different toy collectors not Harvey merchandise but other toy collectors and myself did these little contests where we'd have people get on our sites and leave comments and whatnot and then we would draw 
uh, at random one of the commenters and send them a prize bundle. Mm -hmm. And so some of my duplicate items I've contributed to prize bundles. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, the rest of the duplicates I still have, and at some point I may sell off. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it generally it, it's... It's it's work to sell on eBay. It is, and mm -hmm. I, I've done it before, and uh, I may do it again. But for now, I'm just holding on to the tubes. All right. Well, um, any final comments to say about Harvey or anything else before we wrap it up here? Um, I just want to say that at some point, I really hope that we can do another uh, show like you guys did at uh, Mocha oh, yeah. in New York City back in 2008, 2006. When was that? Uh, 2009, a while actually. Ago, but 2009, actually. 2009, <laughs> that sounds right. Okay. Um, I was really looking forward to meeting you there. I was planning on coming down Friday night for that gala, and I just could not make it. Oh, wow. And uh, it, it was a shame. I actually came two days later, I think it was, <laughs> and saw the exhibit, but by that time you had gone home. Uh, but I was really hoping to meet up with you. And, you know, it, even at the time, I looked around, and I'm like, damn, I've got stuff that's not here. I really wish I could have contributed to this. <laughs> so I'm really hoping that, you know, at, at some point that, uh, that – that's one of the things with the collection. I mean, I really – don't want it to just sit here and be hidden. I want to to it to be shown. Yeah. You know, I I I did an exhibit at my local public library back in uh, 2016, and I'm actually going to do another one uh, this August. Mm -hmm. uh, this August for the month of August, I'll be back in the library. So that's good. Uh, the Ghost Empire film, showing the stuff on, you know, letting them uh, shoot footage of the collection, that was great. Um, I would love to do a, a show like was done at Mocha mm -hmm. or something like that and contribute stuff to that. Or um, well, I've considered contacting, like, um, you know, the Storm Museum of Play out in Rochester or one of those kind of things and seeing if mm -hmm. uh, there'd be any interest in doing an exhibit there. Mm -hmm. Or even at a comic show or any sort of toy collector show doing a little pop-up display. Uh, my wife and I collect uh, gems and minerals, and when we go to the gem shows, right by the entrance where you come in and buy your tickets and whatnot, they typically have a little display area set up that's not mm -hmm. for sale. It's, it's, it's set up like a museum. Mm. It's little display cases where they got a bunch of, of uh, specimens on display. I was thinking it'd be kind of cool at a comic show to set up some merchandise as a little display when you come in and buy your tickets or something like that. Yeah. Well, you mentioned Johnny Harvey and the Ghost Empire. That might be our next yes. chance. It might we might be able to wrangle some sort of, you know, world premiere maybe in New York, and then you could have a display there or something like that. And then oh, absolutely. Maybe yes. I could come yeah, out there totally too. So to that. <laughs> I, I would totally be open to that concept. That would be great. <laughs> but I that'd be a lot of fun actually. I have no idea his final schedule. He says he's trying to wrap it up this year, and so probably come out sometime next year, I would think. But you know. Right. Well, he's still shopping it around too. Yeah. So exactly. You know. so we'll see. <laughs> yes, keeping keeping my fingers crossed. I'm really looking forward to it. All right, Jonathan. In the meantime, I'm going to keep playing around, you know, going along with my thing and, and doing what I can to, to promote the, the hobby. Okay. Keep the name alive. All right. And I will uh, definitely keep in contact with you and try to take some more photos and get them out to you, too. And uh, Sounds good. It's very I appreciate good to, it. It's very good to speak you, with you today, Jonathan, and thank you for being a guest on the show. Thank you for listening, and thank you again, Jonathan Sternfeld, for being my special guest. Episode number 36 will be coming soon. This has been the Fun Ideas Podcast. This is Mark Arnold speaking. This episode is copyright 2019 Fun Ideas Productions. Thank you very much, and have a good night.